Hello, Exploring Computer Science students. This week we're going to talk about designing websites, how to make a good website, how to make a website that's visually appealing, that's functional, that accomplishes its purpose. And this is a new area of study. This is a new academic discipline. Websites are still kind of new to the world scene. And we are our understanding of what they are is developing over time. Uh, but it's important that you not just know how to code a website, but that you actually know how to put together something that looks good and does what you want it to do. Uh, most people will go to a business's website before they will go to that business. And if that business's website is awful, they will not do business with that person. And that actually includes churches too. I'm a pastor and uh, it's important for a church to have a functional website. A lot of people will write a church off before uh, just by looking at its website. So there's a screenshot right there of the world's worst website ever. You guys can go to that and click around it. Uh, this is really fun, awesome tool that somebody has put together for us. It shows you all the things not to do. I'm going to give you 10 things to do. This is all things not to do. Notice how there's like 10 different font colors and 10 different types of fonts and sizes of fonts there. Notice they have awkward pictures and they're mixed in between the words, which is awful. They have awkward outlining. You have uh, the world's most obnoxious traffic counter to your website uh, this week last week uh, ads are everywhere so this is everything not to do with your website so as an example of what to do I'm going to be using LCA's website I want to let you guys know I have nothing to do with LCA's website I don't even know who puts LCA's website together I imagine mr. Musil does uh, he knows who does it uh, but I don't know who does it but they have done a really good job so I'm gonna have some screenshots from our own website to show you what to do. So here we go, 10 steps to designing a good website. The first thing that anybody will tell you is use a uniform style throughout. Um, use a uniform style throughout your website. This means have a simple design and use it everywhere so that people recognize your visual brand. So if um, this PowerPoint, if you look at this PowerPoint, we have a blue background with white font. That's great. You really only need one or two fonts for your whole website. You really only need a, uh, maybe one or two font colors. You really only need one or two background colors. You do not need uh, 800 fonts with 800 different styles. Uh, if you border pictures, make sure it's the same border on every single picture, but use a simple uniform style throughout. That usually, that goes for all graphic design, really. Nobody likes a really busy interface, right? So that's the first and most important thing is don't overthink it. Don't think that more is better. More isn't better. Better is better, but more is not better. Less is actually better when it comes to websites. So uh, step two is put a clickable logo in the top left. We all got together, we took a vote, and we decided that that was a great thing to do. And now every single website you go to has it, and it is a great thing to do. There's no reason to buck the trend here. Create a logo for your business, throw it in the top left corner so that when people click uh, that logo, then it will take them to... Uh, your home page. So have a clickable logo that leads back to the home page. It's an easy way to get back to the home page. Everybody expects it to be there. So have your clickable logo in the top left. Then in the top right, make a search bar. Uh, have a search bar and make it obvious. It doesn't necessarily have to be in the top right corner, and yet that's a good place to put it. That's the first place people are going to look for it. But have a search bar. Make that search bar obvious. Man, let people search your website. They are not going to your website to read every single thing on your website or look at every picture. Most people are going to your website to find out one or two things. So put a search bar there. Google has awesome search bar widgets that they will search just your website. So you just code it in there. Google gives you the code and you just copy and paste it in there. Wonderful thing to do. So make your search bar obvious. Put it somewhere where they can see it. A uh, very good thing to do. Uh, the next thing is have a menu pane. Uh, have one or two menu panes. Uh, most websites have one or two. And make them pop out. Make them drop down menus. So, uh, so just do that. All websites do that. It's a wonderful way to do that. On LCA's homepage, it's right there at the top of the page where it should be. And when you hover over it, it drops down another menu. Uh, people are used to that. They're very effective. They're very wonderful. They're very easy to navigate. Even my grandma can figure out how to use them. Some websites have another menu pane down the left hand pane. Um, that's okay, but I would recommend just doing one. I, I've... I, I've never understood the logic of having two of them. So uh, so I just have one, but if you want to do that, but have menu panes, uh, label them well. 
right now, if I'm an international student right here, I know right where to click, high school international students, right? Uh, if I need to get a hold of somebody, I know right where to click. And that brings me to number five, clearly communicate your site's purpose. Um, clearly communicate what your site's purpose is. Um, right here, LCA's homepage, you have the wonderful video that says, welcome to LCA. And then a wonderful, well-written, we're going to talk about that later, little paragraph that lets me know this website is here to let me know about LCA, to let me know if I'm a prospective student or staff or a parent, this is letting me know about it. Um, notice they didn't say our site's purpose is to let you know about LCA, but the, but the purpose is still clearly communicated in this layout. There's still a very clear purpose. You don't have to say the purpose of our website is to sell you shoes. No, put a picture of a shoe there and a price tag on it, and I'm going to know that you're going to try to sell me shoes. So, so figure out how to clearly communicate that, but you don't have to state it blatantly. Number six is have contact and about sections. Every single website has a contact us or about us section. LCA's does. I have big red arrows there pointing to them. Um, the internet is a highly personal thing. People go to the internet because they want to know about you. They want they, People today, they don't just want to buy shoes. They want to know who they're buying shoes from. They, don't, they just don't want to buy coffee. They want to know who and where that coffee came from and why coffee is the most important thing to you. Yes, it's a little bit silly and it's a little bit ridiculous that we have that expectation of each other now. And yet we are hardwired. I, I believe God has hardwired us for relationship. And so if you have an about or about us section then and people feel like they're emotionally connected to you and they're going to be that much more likely to, uh, to um, read your blogs or buy your shoes or whatever it is you're trying to do. And then a contact section is always good. Don't put your personal email there. You will get spammed and you will get trolled, uh, but there are wonderful forms you can set up that they fill out and it sends an email to you without them knowing your email address. So, so have those two sections. So section number seven is have clear navigation. That goes back to the menu panes, right? Um, but people should be able to clearly navigate your website. If you scroll down to the bottom of most websites like LCAs, you're going to have something like this. That has a main website section and just lists out the section. So um, notice these are in the headings at the top too. This is on the bottom of every single page, this, um, uh, this menu right here. Some websites have a site map where they put the whole tree of their website or they put the flow chart of their website so that you can clearly see it. So whatever it is, make sure people can navigate your website. Make sure they can get around it. Make sure they can find what they're looking for. And number eight, make links obvious. Make hyperlinks obvious, guys. Uh, if you want them to click on it, make it obvious that they should click on it. Uh, two ways you can do that. One is the classic blue underline. Uh, that's the way that we reference something's a hyperlink. Another way is to put a button around it, like I put a button around the word obvious right there. Another way to do it if you're using pictures is put a border around the picture and have a caption on the picture that says click here for. Um, so that's really good. Clickable pictures are always fun. So, But whatever it is, if you want them to click on something, make it obvious that, you need, that they need to click on that. So make your hyperlinks obvious. Um, last number nine, uh, we're getting down to the last two is write good content. Um, still websites have a lot of written words on them. And if your content is not well written, then I am definitely not going to be trusting you at all to do anything. Write good content, go back to English class, figure out how to punctuate a sentence, figure out how to capitalize, figure out um, how to write well, how to use adjectives well, um, figure that out. There's nothing worse than going to a website and being talked to like I'm a three-year-old. Um, it's the worst thing in the world and it's disrespectful and I'm not gonna buy anything from you or trust anything you've written. So write good content, have someone read it, make sure there aren't any typos there, make sure everything's spelled correctly. This paragraph from LCA's website is very well written. Um, somebody put a lot of work into it, even though it's small, um, it's short, it's still great. It tells me about LCA and it makes me, uh, it makes me want to go there. So whatever is written on your website, make sure it's written well, make sure it's formatted well, make sure you pick the right font, make sure that um, it's not too big or too small, make sure it looks good too. Um, so if I look at it and it looks awful, then I'm going to think you're awful. So write good content, have good content for your website. 
And then number 10 is use graphics, animation, and widgets wisely. Um, don't think that because it's a website, you can get away with having pictures everywhere. Pictures everywhere are awful. They're busy. They overload the memory of the person looking at it. I, it makes me uncomfortable. So usually a good graphic to word ratio is about your website should be about 25% graphics. Uh, it should probably be another third of words and then another sort of whatever's left over is just sort of empty white space kind of transitions. So um, animations, um, they, they really, you can use them well. If you go to the LCA's website, the Welcome to Latent Christian Academy, there's a video playing behind it. That's a great example of a video um, in a website that works really well. Um, GIFs and memes do not belong on your website. They belong on social media. They're great there. I use them a lot there. I laugh at them a lot there. But GIFs and memes do not belong on your website. If you have pictures, they should be very professional. They should look good. They shouldn't be busy. They should be simple and they should not overwhelm your website. So widgets are something that somebody else has programmed for you to put in your website. They're great. There's a lot of wonderful tools out there. Just use them very wisely. Uh, don't overload your audience with them. So, so those are 10 simple ways to make a great website, 10 things you want to think through and watch out for. Uh, hopefully you learned something here. Your assignment this week is to go to a university's website. It could be any university in the world and use these 10 things to critique that website. Tell me what you think. Um, about that website. Did they follow these rules well? Did they not follow these rules well? So give me an example of a bad website so or a good website. So let me know if you have questions and uh, keep on keeping on. I uh, miss you guys.